Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So good to see all of you gathered here this morning. The session did make a consensus that we could, if you're vaccinated, make masks optional. So if you're vaccinated, masks are optional. We, we would encourage people to still maintain social distancing if you're not with one of your family groups or groups that you came with because kids under 12 are not vaccinated yet. And so, uh, and, and we have some elderly with some chronic conditions and things like that who can't get vaccinated. So we want to keep that in mind and, and try to continue some healthy practices that way. But so glad to hear so much chatter in church this morning and see everyone uh, gathered together. It feels like we're coming back. Things are opening up and it's a, it's a great feeling. A um, couple of announcements this morning. Uh, first, congratulations to our graduates. And we had a big class of graduates. And so we're going to honor them today. And we have some unfinished wooden crosses, kind of like their unfinished lives to, to give out. But then we've also got a special video that Sarah made that we're going to show uh, that they helped put together. So congratulations, you guys. We, we are proud of you. Um, and we look forward to, to what you become to who you become or how you become more of who you are already. We have um, camp scholarships available. If you have kids or grandkids who are camp age, who would like to go to Camp Wyoming, uh, they are welcome to apply for one of the scholarships. It's actually just fill out the form for a scholarship and we're happy to give those if you have any family who would like to do that. Um, and then, we, we do have a special event happening today in the life of uh, one of the ministries of the church, Iowa Winds um, and Nutrimos. They're doing the community garden plant giveaway today. And, um, and we have a couple of the folks, um, Barbara and Jane, who have been coordinating with Nutrimos for years. Now, Nutrimos is the, uh, is the, kind of educational community outreach branch of Iowa Winds. And you don't get to see these two ladies too much, but they're here working uh, every month with meetings and coordinating events. And then they're also uh, every week planning all kinds of outreach things. And they've been working hard on the community garden. And today at three o'clock, um, the some deacons from the Catholic Church and the bishop from the Catholic Church, which, which if, you're, if you're Catholic, that's a big deal that the bishop is coming to do a blessing of the 50 garden plant kits that we're going to give away today, and then for the plants that we're doing in the community garden. But I'm going to let uh, Barbara uh, say a little bit more about that, and she's going to share a little bit. But I wanted, before you do that, I wanted to honor these two ladies. Um, and kind of connect them to the larger church and let you see, um, and it's not this, just these two ladies, there's a whole new Tremos board, and most of those folks go to different churches. Um, they have different faith traditions, but they work together with Iowa Winds and with Nutrimos to do outreach for the community. It's a commission of the church. Um, it is very much a part of the body, uh, and it's one of the ways that we're growing. 
Um, and so there's Nutrimos, but then there's All God's Creatures, the animal shelter one, and it's the same way. This church is doing things where we're branching out and reaching people and, and doing good things for our communities in ways that we don't always get to see on Sunday morning. And Jane and Barbara have been a part of this church for, well, I'm going to say well, part of Nutrimos for, what, four years? Three years? Yeah. 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 And they're from Fairfield which is why they don't, yeah, why they're coming back and forth. They've loved Zoom. Yeah. Well, come, come up and share what you've got, Barbara, and thank you. Yeah. So I'm a gardener, and talking in front of people is not my uh, strong point, so I have a few things. I, I do want to just thank you for inviting me to your service today, and I'd like to express how grateful I am to have had the opportunity to help the immigrant families in our community. I was drawn to Pastor Trey and the church members because of their sincere friendliness and their desire to help social injustices in our community. I was, um, excuse me, I volunteered to help and soon we came up with this plan uh, to use some of the plots in the gar uh, community gardens to grow fresh produce um, and we would supply the church food pantry with that, with that produce. This year we planted nine four by eight foot plots with a great variety of veggies. With all the rain we've had, we expect a bumper crop of produce throughout the summer. We already have some watering the garden and we also have someone that loves to weed. <laughs> uh, we would, uh, we could really use those some extra hands when it comes time to harvest. And so if any of you could help, we would really appreciate that and you could just let us know. We're also providing the immigrant families with plants and seeds so they can grow their own gardens, either at home or at the community garden. This year we made 50 garden kits and later today we'll distribute those kits to the families. So in conclusion, I'd just like to say that through such small gifts of plants, seeds, food, and fellowship, we can spread a wave of kindness and generosity through, to all the people around us. Through such simple acts, we can make a lasting difference in the world. And I am happy to be a part of such a mission. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. So uh, thank you, ladies. Uh, Jane is the chairperson for Nutrimos, and Barbara is, a, I, I don't know what we'd call you, the head of the gardens? Yes, you're the garden head. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate your work and all the time you've spent here. Thank you. It is indeed, uh, it's the work, it takes many hands to do that work, but um, it's, it's neat to see uh, when things come together and, and things growing. So I was excited to have Jane and Barbara to come and share and make a little request for volunteer help too, when it comes to harvesting. I think that's all of the announcements that I have today. Are there any, any other announcements? Let us center our hearts and minds to worship God.
join me in the call to worship. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the ever-present glorious communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and known in you. And also with you. We are gathered today to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, who renews us each day. We give thanks to God that in this place, in this house of worship, the Holy Spirit recreates us in the image of God made known perfectly in Jesus Christ, so that we might shine his light, share his love, and shape his people. Thanks be to God. Truly, we are blessed to feel the Spirit's presence in this place and in every place. Let us stand to sing and worship in the, Holy, in the life of the Holy Spirit. Except we don't sing out. Yeah, we don't sing I know, I know. So it's like no, and no standing. So sit and enjoy what the choir recorded. Prayerfully. The Spirit of God helps us in our weaknesses in interceding with signs too deep for words. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. Let us pray. Empowering God of wonder and might, we feel your loving fire burning within us, aching to do justice and love kindness. Yet we douse it with apathy. We hear your voice calling us to be more do more and change the world, yet we silence it with indifference. Forgive us for all that we do and fail to do. Help us to feel your fire, hear your voice, and respond by offering our lives. Let us continue to confess our personal sins in silence. Our holy God is loving and forgiving. Because of the gift of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. 
receive the entire forgiveness of all your sins and live with God's Holy Spirit, the gift of a loving fire burning inside you. Friends, believe this good news. Through Jesus Christ, we are called as friends, forgiven as sinners, and sent as servants. Thanks be to God. Amen. Prayer for illumination. Holy Spirit, ultimate being of freedom and wisdom, help us let go of our worries and anxieties. Open our hearts and minds so we might not only hear, but act upon the good news of Jesus Christ for our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. The first lesson is from Romans 8, 22 to 28. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. The word of our Lord. Thank you. 
our second reading for today comes from the second chapter of Acts. Listen now to these words from our Lord. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now a crowd had gathered, and Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all who lived in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your elders shall dream dreams. The words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy God, as we live into this time of Pentecost, help us to be people who are transformed by your Holy Spirit. Help us to be open to growing, to pushing forth new life, to being new life. Guide us through these words in this lesson. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today is Pentecost Sunday, and in our traditions, in the Christian traditions, Pentecost is celebrated as the giving of the Holy Spirit, as I knock things off. So Pentecost is celebrated as the giving of the Holy Spirit, and it comes from Acts 2, where the disciples had gathered together. And the presence of God's Holy Spirit descended upon each of them. But what's interesting about this is that what we forget is that the disciples were gathered together in hiding for fear of the Jewish authorities, for fear of those who had crucified Jesus. They had been hiding and Christ had told them, stay together until I come and give you the power of the Spirit. Uh, they were afraid, and they should be, wouldn't you? If, if you were a follower of Jesus back then, and they had hung him on a cross, you would be very afraid and in hiding. And it's then, on this 50th day of Passover, which was already, Pentecost is a historic Jewish tradition already. It's the celebration of the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses. It's also the celebration of the first uh, harvest. So it's 50 days after the Passover, which is when they would gather the first harvest. So all of your winter veggies and all of that. So this was already a celebration day. And it's on that day that the disciples are hiding together in this room that the spirit descends on them. And it says like flames lit on each of their heads. And they started speaking in other languages that they didn't speak. And they were making such a commotion these 11 in hiding were making such a commotion that people started to gather around outside where they were hiding. Not good if you're hiding, right? But that's what happened. I had always read this for years and years and years as if the crowd was already there. But that's not what was happening. They were in hiding and they got so filled with the spirit that they wanted to share Christ's good news. And what is that good news? It's that pain and suffering lose. It's that death is defeated. It's that bullies are backed down. Slaves will be set free. Women will be empowered. Light beats darkness. The way of Jesus as truth and love wins. And the disciples make a commotion about being able to share that good news with all of these different people from different places. Now, church types like me, 
We love the idea of Pentecost. We love the idea of being spirit-filled people. I've been in churches where we have sung happy birthday to the church because Pentecost is the birth of the church. And I've waved red banners and wavers and I've seen drums and people dancing up and down the aisles, but it was awkward because it was Presbyterian and they couldn't... <laughs> They couldn't quite do it right. <laughs> Is Jackie Tolson here? She, I know she taught a lesson about how to clap on the, on the, what is it? On the two and the four instead of the one and the three because Presbyterians don't know how to clap in time to music when we feel the spirit. We, as most mainline Protestants do, we kind of suffer a collective hesitancy about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not decent and in good order. The Holy Spirit doesn't follow Robert's rules of order. The Holy Spirit blows where it wills, and it's the Spirit of Jesus out on the loose, risen from the grave, and lighting on everybody and anybody. And in the Bible, the Spirit worked on people, whether they were Jewish, whether they were Arab, whether they were Philistines, it didn't matter. The Spirit worked on whomever the Spirit wanted to work, and it's just a little too unpredictable for those of us who are called the frozen chosen because of our worship and theology. The Spirit moves in us. And I know the Spirit has moved in many of you many times, but we don't manifest it overtly very often, waving our hands and singing and, and clapping spontaneously. One of my favorite comedians grew up uh, as, a, as a mainline Protestant, and he does church comedy, and he was invited to an evangelical Pentecostal service to do his comedy routine. And when he got done doing his routine, uh, worship was going to start right after. And so he was done. He got a big laugh, and he was going down, and the band was starting up, and this guy just puts his hands up in the air, and he gave him a high five. <laughs> he didn't know what this was, right? It's, he, had, he hadn't seen that before in a church. We're not always real comfortable uh, doing that. And I think it's because for years, it wasn't our tradition to do such things, which isn't wrongheaded, right? It's just us. We tend to avoid the emotivism that dominates so much of some evangelical Christianity, and, and they may feel more comfortable showing outwardly how they feel when the Spirit is acting inwardly in them. They may want to get up and dance and put their hands up in the air and, and do those things, and that is okay. Presbyterians may want to tap their foot. <laughs> That's okay, you guys. <laughs> But what I've learned in the years of groans and gains and pains in a life of faith is that more often than not, the spirit doesn't suddenly unleash a burst of emotion. Though it can appear that way, the spirit actually plants and grows holiness in us. Think of it like this. A farmer plants a seed. While the farmer is sleeping, the spirit of life works miracles. There are weeks, maybe months, maybe even years, depending on the type of speed of seed, where there is this hidden work. And then suddenly, powerfully, seemingly out of nowhere, bursts forth from the dirt and the darkness something beautiful. Do you think the seed groaned when it cracked open? Do you think there was pain as the green leaves pushed through the darkness in the soil to try to reach the light? Pain is weakness leaving the body. Have you heard that one? I think every coach has said that to any athlete training for something somewhere. Pain 
is weakness leaving the body. And soon after that phrase comes no pain, no gain, right? You hear that, and then you can hear all of the, the players groan as the coach says, give me one more. Now, I'm sure if I were to sit down with all of you, let's say I came over to your breakfast table and I asked you about your daily aches and pains. And I asked, hi, how is your pain leading to gain? How's that arthritis going? All right. Do you feel like you're growing from it? Is it weakness leaving the body? You would give me that same look that athletes give that coach when they say, give me one more pains, pains, weakness, leaving the body. You would, are you crazy? For some pain, there isn't any gain. It's just that. It's pain. It makes us groan. It makes us heave exasperated sighs. It can be emotional pain. It can be physical pain. It can be spiritual pain. It can even be numbness from any pain, which can feel like a pain to not feel anything. I had a member in my last church in South Carolina. Let's call him Bob. <laughs> Bob had this calcified growth on his elbow. And it was not as big as a tennis ball, but bigger than a ping pong. And it was this tumor. And it was painful, but it wasn't harmful. It was just there. It was just there. And it had calcified. So the doctor said, well, there's no reason to, to take it off. It's not going to do anything. And, and I said, but, but it hurts. And he says, no, only if I bump it on something and it gets the way because you forget that it's there. But he liked to chase his grandchildren with it. <laughs> and it became a kind of source of entertainment. But that calcified growth served no purpose right? It was just there. And sometimes pain serves no purpose. We have that scripture that we heard today where it says, God works together all things for good. But that doesn't mean that God causes this pain to work something together for good. Some pain is just our futile lives. We're finite. We die. We have pain. We get arthritis. Our knees and ache, and, and we, we have muscle spasms and all these kinds of things, and it just is. But we can work good out of some of that pain. Like my mom loves to show her grandchildren her arthritic fingers, and she likes to do this little witch lap with this crooked little finger like that. And <laughs> She made some fun out of her pain. Paul speaks powerfully about the spirit groaning with us, helping us in our weakness and sighing in us when we are clueless about how or what to pray. He talks about this with another kind of pain, a pain that is very real. And this is the pain of existential angst. Isn't that a fun word? This is the pain of the church. This is the pain of dreams unfulfilled yet. A pain of a vision of how things should be versus how they are. This is the pain of expectations versus reality. This is the pain of children and youth and dreaming dreams and knowing better than their parents and grandparents how the world should be and how they can make it so and fighting that fight to do it and yet finding out that it's a struggle. It's the pain where we know things should be better than they are. At every turn, there's a hurdle and a roadblock. And Paul says it is as if all of creation is groaning to bear forth that vision of how we know the world should be, and it hurts. That pushing and that groaning and that pain, it literally hurts. And that's when Paul says the spirit intercedes with us with sighs too deep for words. When you sigh and despair about life isn't going the way it's supposed to be, 
and that this pain that you feel is very real, Paul says this sigh is actually God's spirit praying in you. It's comfort. It's the spirit of life saying, this isn't right. And it is God in you. My son, Hudson, loves America's Funniest Home Videos. He mostly likes to see people fall off of ladders. It gives him the giggles to no end to see people falling. He loves it. Well, in one of these little videos, there's this little girl, and she's about three foot high, but she is probably 35 years old. Do you know what I mean? And she's got on makeup and her like a necklace and lipstick and this little dress and these high heels. And she opens up her, her room uh, door in the hallway and she sticks her head out and she says, and you can see a messy room behind her. And she says, I am not going to live like this anymore. <laughs> well, that's a Pentecost moment. That is something born out of pain that says enough. Enough is enough. We know that the world is not supposed to be the way it is. And we're not going to hide in this upper room anymore. We're going to go out and we're going to proclaim the good news and do something about it. Now, I want to be clear. Being filled with the Holy Spirit and finding that, that Pentecost power of enough is enough isn't some rage-filled rant. It isn't some manifesto out of anger. But it is from the fruit of the Spirit. Paul says in Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. It isn't envious or boastful. It doesn't insist in its own way. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing. And Paul says in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the Spirit blossoms and manifests out of those things. Paul was getting on to some of the Corinthian churches because they were saying, well, some of these people aren't charismatic enough. They're not speaking in tongues and they're not doing this. And Paul says, Paul says, listen, if you're doing all of that, that's great. But if you don't have love, you're like a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If you don't have love and you give away everything you own, or you have a prophetic voice, or you have this angst and rage inside of you, but it's not coming from that place of love. That's not the spirit. That's just you being mad because you watch too much news. But Paul says, when the fruit of the spirit is manifest in you, it is going to come from that place of love, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Have you heard that one before? That was Paul talking about the manifestation of the spirit and the gifts and the fruits. There's no law against such things. My prayer is that while we all have pain in our lives, we know that God works all things together for good. And some pain may be pointless, but you can use the pain and the growing pains that you have in your life to make something good out of it. I hope none of you get a calcified tennis elbow like Jimmy Darby, but if you do, I hope you chase children with it because that is a good way to make something good out of your pain. I also know that sometimes pain just hurts and pain is pointless, as pointless as that calcified elbow. And know that we are with you. And that the spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. When you feel that pain, that God is there with you in the midst of it. And when you let out that sigh and that groan, the spirit and the whole body of Christ groans with you.
So may you manifest the fruit of the Spirit in your pain and in your joy and in all things. In Christ's name, amen. I was told a long time ago that Presbyterians traditionally don't clap in church because we're not being entertained, but Presbyterians can clap because we've been filled with the Holy Spirit to say thanks to God for someone using God's gifts, uh, discipline and musical practice to share and lead us in worship. So thank you. Um, thank you for playing those pieces today and for the season that you've had. We, we appreciate your work. Um, so thank you all.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So a special congratulations to our graduates, Brennan. Brennan Bender, Matt Brooks, Carson Lamb, Logan Lee, Ellie Lichty, Katie McCormick, Mason Mills, Luke Ryan, Grace Sheets, and Kendon Scheidlin. What a big group of graduates. And we have a special video today. Hello. My name is Luke Ryan, and I will be attending the University of Iowa this fall and majoring in biomedical engineering. My favorite church memory is when we went up to Iowa City on a mission trip, and it was here I learned what it was to be a follower of Christ and how to help people less fortunate than I was. I am also incredibly grateful to have had the opportunities to be exposed to new music, be it through singing in the choir or working on special music. I'm also incredibly grateful to have been able to work with Leo in the audio-visual booth. Hi, my name is Carson Lamb. Next year, I will be attending Central College. I plan to major in natural science on the path of pre-pharmacy. I will also be continuing my track and field career. I would like to thank all my mentors for their support and guidance throughout schooling, and especially Barb Miller. And my favorite church memory was Press On and all of the fun activities we did. of Iowa as an open major. However, I am leaning towards a field in STEM and I am also hoping to continue my involvement in music. Throughout the years, I have enjoyed ringing in slow notes and being a counselor during VBS. I would also finally like to thank the church for its endless generosity, support, and kindness. Hi, I'm Logan Lee and my future plans are to go to SEC this fall and work towards a business major. I am also looking at possibly doing track or soccer. Um, after two years at SGC, I plan on transferring to Iowa uh, on one of their business programs. Um, I would just like to thank the church for all they've done, uh, their generosity and guidance and just everything they do for our community and for me. And uh, one of my favorite memories has got to be just going to press on and having fun with everybody there and just building relationships. Hi, I'm Kevin Scheitlin, and I will be attending the University of Iowa this fall with a major in journalism and mass communications and a minor in political science. And my future plan is to become a White House correspondent. One of my favorite memories that I have had in the past years that I was a part of the church was um, probably going to press on and having all the mission trips and having so much fun with all my peers on the mission trips. Hello everyone, I'm Ellie Lichty. I plan on attending the University of Iowa next year to major in business with a minor in Spanish. I'm extremely grateful for the, all the opportunities that the church has given me. The church has taught me that serving others can be fun. The people of the church have shown me great examples of how to live through Christ. My favorite memory with the church would have to be the week of summer at the Kramer Farm. I've loved seeing the joy on those kids' faces when they gain a better understanding of our Lord. Thank you. And so if I could have the, the seniors who are here uh, come forward, we, we have a couple of gifts to give you. Um, it's actually the unfinished cross, which is uh, to symbolize uh, God still working in your lives and that you're, you're unfinished. Um, but 
like with the fruit of the Spirit, there's something, even while you're sleeping, there's the Spirit working in you, nurturing things in you uh, so that you're growing and you will bloom. And my prayer is that you turn in uh, more into the people who demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, love, kindness, patience, generosity, humility, self-control, and patience, and um, love, love. And so, uh, last thing, uh, for your life, four words, love God, love people. Easy. I have more. And thank you, Mike Vincent, for doing the unfinished crosses. And so you have to come back next year and show us your finished cross. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Blessings. Please join me in a time of prayer. Oh God, our creator of us all, we remember that Jesus promised that he would send to us the Holy Spirit. Keep that promise to us today. He called his spirit the spirit of truth. Open our eyes that we may see the truth. Strengthen our hearts that we may face the truth. Enlighten our minds that we may understand the truth. Make our memories retentive that we may remember the truth. Make resolute our wills that we may obey the truth through the spirit which he has promised to us. He said that the spirit would bring to our remembrance all that he had said. Oh God, when we are in danger of forgetting the things which we should always remember, grant that your spirit may bring again to our memory the promises, the commands, and the presence of our risen and blessed Lord. He said that the spirit would tell us things, which in the days in his flesh, he could not say to his disciples because they were not ready to receive them. Oh God, keep us from ever thinking of our Christian faith and belief as something static. Help us to remember that there are ever new depths of truth, new vistas of beauty, new glories of experience, new gifts of power into which the Spirit can lead us. Jesus said that the Spirit would lead us into all truth. Help us to remember that all truth belongs to you. The skill of the scientist and the thought of the philosopher, the inspiration of the poet, the vision of the artist, the melody of the musician, the craft of the craftsman, and the strength of the body and of mind by which we make a living. And since everything comes from you, help us to use everything for you and to show your love to all people. Most holy God, we especially ask on this day that you bless and make known your spirit through the fruit of the spirit to these young graduates. Help us, oh God, pay attention to them to not become so set in our ways as we grow older that we want to silence the voice of youth. Help us to see their visions and dream their dreams of what the world can be and help us work together to make your kingdom come. We ask all of these things in Christ's name who taught us to pray saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
One of the myths about Pentecost is that Pentecost is the giving of the Holy Spirit to an individual. It is not. It is the giving of the Holy Spirit to the church, to the body of Christ, to all of the people. The gift of the Spirit is for the building up of the body. Though the Spirit may work in us individually, it works in us individually so that we can be built up, so that we can help others in pain and suffering and joy and weakness and all of those things. And so thinking about that, I was thinking about the scholarships that we had uh, given to the kids and uh, to the, well, you're not kids anymore, are you? To the young adults, the graduates, and, and how we had 10 graduates this year. We had 10 graduates last year. Uh, it's uh, $500 per graduate. It's uh, what $5,000 this year, $5,000 last year. And the way I was thinking about it was that there was a company there that was giving away scholarships too, and kind of nice. They take from their profit margin and they give. We do it very differently. We take a whole body of people, all of you, lifelong friends and families, and you put money in an offering plate. And we gather up that money and we give it to the kids and say, here's a scholarship. And here's why I'm saying this. When you grow up, find people like this. Find people who will work together for something good. Find your community, find your tribe, and make sure they're giving back. Find that place. It's, it's important. 
It's important. So find, find. It, may be, it might be a Presbyterian church. It might be your track team. But do those things for the building up of the body. Last point. Sarah and I recently have been texting back and forth. And one of the common threads that I noticed was the word UGH. Do you know that word? U-G-H? UGH. And it's usually followed by, I know, right? <laughs> it must be an age thing. Anyway, because I see some of you laughing and others are like, what? U-G-H, UGH. It means UGH. It, it is. And I say that because that is the spirit groaning with us. Because usually that conversation is, hey, did you hear this happened? And it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like this. And then someone else types, Ugh, I know, right? <laughs> and then we start to work to make it a little bit better. That's the spirit sighing with this. So when something's not right in your life, just remember the spirit of God says, Ugh, I know, right? And sighs with you. Friends, go from this place with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit working in you and through you and out to all of those you encounter. In Christ's name, amen.